it on Facebook. What police say likely led him to do this. And a show of power by the U.S. Vice President Mike Pence at the DMZ in South Korea. His message to Kim Jong-un. Happy Monday, everyone, and thanks for waking up with us. Start the work week. Yes, um, one of us is in a little bit different uniform. Yeah, this you won't miss this guy. <laughs> That's your Boston Marathon workers. jacket. Yeah, exactly. There you go. See you, Boston. Yeah, they're oh, not running awesome. this year, but paying tribute to the marathon. Yeah, I wish I was there actually in Boston early on this month. Oh, not that I don't want to be here with you three. <laughs> but, Understood. Uh, Understood. Yeah. Let's take a look at some video because they are lining up at the start line. They're going to board buses and head to the race. Coming up at 6:30 this morning, you'll meet one woman who you will want to keep your eye on today. She's running. 50 years after she made history in this very same marathon. Wow. And we're coming off a beautiful weekend. Many of you shared your photos. Brian went snowshoeing on the Skyline Trail. He says living on the border of two beautiful states has its advantages. Most definitely. And Joe had quite the adventure. He went on a Jeep safari in Utah and he still made it back to the Northwest in time for Easter Sunday. We'd love to see your photos. Just use the hashtag IamUpPDX. See that blue sky rod makes us hopeful for the week. Yeah, uh, Fridays are next really sunny, dry day. Let's put that to <laughs> bed for right now. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it's uh, mostly sunny in 67 in Boston right now. Okay, that's so warm. That is pretty warm. That's it's supposed to be in the 70s warm today. Marathon Monday, yes. Yeah. Spectators love it. Runners not so exactly. much. Exactly. Well, I just like to dream about it. 67 in the morning. <laughs> wow. Here's our radar. You know, we had that rain come in uh, as scheduled last evening. Didn't turn out to be much. It generally weakened as it pushed farther up to the north. And then so far this morning, since about midnight, we've had well less than a tenth of an inch of rain. And you can see I-5, just a little dribble here or there. Most of the rain for the past uh, several hours has actually been in the coast range and up in the Cascades. But there you see the clouds, uh, sun up this morning now uh, before 6.30. 49 is the morning temperature, so it's a comfortable start at the bus stop. A little bit of rain around this morning, but not much. Have your rain gear. There could be a pretty good push of rain beginning early this afternoon, which means your kids could be walking home in a fairly steady shot of rain, potentially at uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon. It'll be about 59 degrees. There's a sun up time at 621. Here's the bright orange man. What's his name? Yeah, Chris. Yeah, you can't miss this, right? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead. You can't miss that either. The taillights on the I-5 South to meet at the Interstate Bridge. That's one of our first low spots in the morning. We're also seeing the band field starting to tighten up a little bit. This is from 28th, looking west towards Lloyd Center and the I-5 split. So. All the usual slow spots starting to build on a Monday morning commute, but so far, Kathy and Brenda, no unusual delays on the freeways just yet. Chris, thank you. Portland Police Chief Mike Marshman is expected back on duty today. The mayor reinstated him last week. An internal investigation found Chief Marshman didn't ask a lieutenant to sign him into a training that he didn't attend. The Portland Police Commanding Officers Association isn't satisfied, though. It filed a complaint against Mayor Wheeler. It says Wheeler corrupted the investigation when he released information about the case. It also argues the mayor violated city rules. Please let us know you're safe. We are very worried. A parent's emotional plea. Family and friends of missing Camus teen Cole Burbank are desperately searching for him. Nobody has seen him for four days now. KGW's Tim Gordon is live at Clark College this morning. And Tim, Cole takes classes there. Yeah, he does. He's actually a Camus High School student, but he takes classes here at Clark College with the Running Start program. One clue that investigators have is that the last time his cell phone pinged, it was right in this area. Uh, but still, no sign of Cole since last Thursday. So, late yesterday, about 30 people met up at a nearby Burgerville to kick off a search. It was organized on Facebook and included family and friends and others who just wanted to help to do something. Uh, they spread out from there and did their searching. They hoped to find Cole, who's 16 years old. You can see he's got a great smile. This picture shows him leaving Camas High School at about 7.45 Thursday morning to come here to Clark College. That's the last picture of him. Again, his cell phone last pinged just north of here, but no sign of Cole or leads that have led to finding him. The search yesterday was the last of a few over the Easter weekend. Cole's parents expressed their thanks and shared their strong desire to have their son back safe. And just thank everyone for helping us and, and um, we just, we're almost there, I feel, in my mother's heart. We will do whatever it takes to bring Cole home. Love mom and dad. Love you, Cole. 
now. Now this is Cole's Black Honda Accord. It's a 2010 model and the license plate is Washington AKW 3441. Again, a black Honda Accord. The car is missing too, so if you see that car or you see Cole or you have any information about his whereabouts, call police right away. And by the way, you can help by going to my Twitter and sharing the pictures and information I'm putting out. Spread the word and let's find this guy. Now back to you. Good idea, Tim. Thank you. There's a mystery this morning near the Selwood Bridge. Hikers found human bones in the woods, and now a forensics team is trying to figure out what happened there. Police taped off the Riverview Natural Area along Highway 43 on the west side of the bridge. Homicide detectives are trying to find out who they belong to and how long the bones have been there. The bones are now headed to the Oregon State Police Crime Lab for analysis. The FBI is helping Cleveland police with a desperate manhunt. They're trying to find a man who posted a video on Facebook killing someone. Police say Steve Stevens may have left Ohio by now. In a statement early this morning, police told people living in Pennsylvania, New York, Indiana and Michigan to be on the lookout for this guy. The video shows Stevens point a gun at 74 year old Robert Godwin Sr. Moments later, the man is on the ground. Stevens told him he was going to die because of a woman. People who knew Godwin say they can't believe he's gone. This man right here was a good man. And I just hate, I'm, I, I hate he's gone. You know what I mean? I don't know what I'm going to do. It it's, feel like, it's not real. I feel like my heart is going to stop. It hey, feel so like, you'll be all right. It feels like it's going to stop. In a separate video on Facebook, Stevens claimed he killed more than a dozen other people, but police say they can't confirm that. The Supreme Court is back in session this morning. It's set to hear a case on the separation of church and state. Please and newly appointed right Justice Neil Gorsuch could make a big difference in the case. The case has stalled for months because of the risk of a 4-4 vote. But because of Gorsuch's conservative judicial record, the court does now have the 5-4 majority. As a federal judge, Gorsuch was sympathetic to claims of religious discrimination. It was Justice Gorsuch's views on religious liberty that might have been the most persuasive thing to conservative advocates when he was nominated. So it would be a surprise if he weren't in favor of the interests of the church in this case. This will be Gorsuch's first full week on the job. He filled the seat of the late Justice Antonin Scalia, who died a little more than a year ago. Vice President Mike Pence is warning North Korea not to test the United States. He visited the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea today. He says all options are on the table to deal with the North Korean threat. The United States commitment to South Korea is ironclad and immutable. And under President Trump's leadership, I know our alliance will even be stronger. Our nations will be safer and the Asia Pacific will be more secure. The comments come one day after North Korea's failed missile launch. Vice President Pence is in South Korea as part of a four nation Asia Pacific trip. Broad Hill, we wanted to give you a heads up this morning. You have some competition, some stiff competition from a young girl in Yakult, Washington. Always somebody thinks they can do better than I can. Oh, yeah. no, well, well you, you'll have to see. She's pretty cute. Her mom sent us this adorable video of her weather report. Hello, my name is Ainsley Percival, and it's Easter Sunday, April 16th, and the weather outside today is very cloudy, just a little sprinkle earlier today, but there might be some coming showers tonight once it gets darker. This is KGW News, Ainsley Percival on At Live. <laughs> on at live. You've got a future kid. I love it. Ainsley, she's got the little cardboard box as a TV. Very creative. Love that. You can share your videos with us. Just use the hashtag I am up PDX. And she kind of nailed it with the cloudy, right? Because yes. that's generally what you say most every day. But, but what was the key that made that weather report so good? She used the word might. 
Eh, it might rain later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never commit. She's yeah. catching on. She already knows. Uh, well, there's just a, a dab of rain out there. You know what? It might get heavier later today, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So I'm already learning the tips of my trade. Uh, that is my headline, though. So far, it's just been a little bit of piddly stuff, I'm calling it. But rain will be increasing during the p.m. hours uh, early this afternoon, in fact. And then by the time we get into this evening, we'll be back into kind of a scattered downpour pattern, which means maybe some more hail, maybe a rumble of thunder. That pattern uh, with the heavier showers stays in place overnight tonight and tomorrow. So that's kind of what we're looking at uh, for the next 48 hours. Uh, Eastern Washington, clearly the big bullseye moisture this morning. A little bit of light snow out over the blues. And so far here on the west side, most of the action has been rain over the Cascades and then this heavier rain pocket over the Coast Range. Haven't you see that void up and down I-5? Not totally dry. There's a few specks of rain around Portland. But really not much has fallen in the valley and up into southwest Washington over the past three, four hours. Temperatures generally in the upper 40s. I mean, there's a variance. 45 Sandy. We've actually been as warm as 50 in a few spots. But right now, everybody on the map including you folks up in Aurora, uh, 48 degrees. Aurora was, what, 68, I think, yesterday. It was the warm spot in our immediate area. We had that 67 up in uh, Kelso. Uh, here's the planner for today. So it's mostly piddly stuff this morning into lunchtime, starting off well into the 40s, 55 at noon. Then rain picks up a little bit this afternoon, 58. Don't forget, if you have evening plans tonight, we could get hammered with a few spotty downpours coming up. Everybody's above freezing. Pick out your city here. The Dow's 45. Good morning to you. Winds in the gorge, not bad. Chance of moisture is in the forecast. 50s at the beach, up and down I-5. And then 50s mostly out on the east side. Matter is 59. So temperature is not much of a variance today. Timberline Lodge will be close to the freezing mark. Snow level is going as high as 5,000 feet this afternoon. It's about a quarter of an inch of rain or less if you're going to the beach today. Winds from the south expected to be gusty at times right at the beach itself to about 30. Here's the mountain forecast. Government camp will be well above freezing, so no problems there with the passes later today. 40 degrees of temperature and winds not bad out in the gorge as well. Uh, just skip your eyes to Friday. That's our next totally dry day. Right now, the weekend looks to be a Saturday morning front. Anyway. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then Sunday right now shows promise of being dry. I mean, it could be dry. It might be dry Sunday. Boy, that little girl's going to take so me to the next like level. Just right? It might be <laughs> dry. Okay, we want to give you as much notice as possible. There are more I-5 closures coming. Yeah, this is a disaster this weekend. Oh, wow. Even though I know we talked on and on about it. Even for you. And, uh, yeah, you I, didn't I, heed your own warning. I, I forgot it, too. I was in a rush set. Saturday morning and I hopped on Greeley and I'm like, I'm going to get, oh, no, I'm not. Yeah, the ramps to I-5 South closed. Yes, this is all part of that Burnside Bridge structural reinforcement project. There's a lot of beams and stuff that are on the bridge that are falling apart. They're going in to fix that. To do that, of course, they've got to close southbound lanes of I-5, one northbound lane of I-5, and the ramp from 84 westbound to I-5 South. That was all closed this weekend. Major delays on the freeways as a result of that. I wanted to let you know now that we'll be back at it again next weekend. We take a weekend off and then two more weekends of northbound closures. So we've got about a month of some uh, busy stuff to deal with over on the east side with the freeway and the Burnside Bridge work. Right now, the drive from Clark County building a bit. That's I-5 southbound, 15 minutes to get you from Main Street to the Fremont Bridge. That's what it looks like right now near the Interstate Bridge. Let's take it up the Sky 8. We'll take you up and over Highway 26 out near, yes, some more road work. <laughs> it just never ends. Westbound lanes of Highway 26, there's a lane shift, a new traffic pattern now between uh, 185th and Cornelius Pass Road, and you can see traffic there moving from the bottom to the top of your screen. That is the westbound drive, so folks having to get used to that. So far, traffic on that side of town, fairly light. Ladies? Okay, Chris, thank you. A lot of us have our phones connected to just about everything, including our bank accounts. That information can be at risk. Phones and tablets are just as vulnerable to viruses as your home computer. Sometimes your device might be infected and you don't even realize it. So here are six signs to look out for. The first, if your phone data is going down fast, that's because the virus is trying to run a lot of background tasks and communicate with the Internet. Also, check to see how often your apps crash. Most viruses mess with the apps that you use most often. Prevent that from happening by updating all of your apps whenever you can. You also want to watch out for apps you don't remember downloading yourself and delete them. They'll look just like real ones. Also, a lot of websites have pop-up ads, but if you start seeing them all the time, check for viruses. And look at your phone bill when it arrives. You might have charges that aren't usually there for Android users. The most common ones that show up are under the SMS category. That's the malware sending text to premium rate numbers. All of these things take up a lot of your device's energy. 
Check how fast your battery is running out. If it's a lot faster than usual, it may have a virus.